Welcome to another episode of Raising OKC Kids, Conversations with Metro Family in Oklahoma City. I'm Kirsten Holder, and today we're talking with Laura Phillips Shin, co-founder of Factory Obscura, Amanda Harmer, manager of Family and Access Programs at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art, and Natalie Shirley, president and CEO at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Thank you all for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you for inviting us. Yes, well, I'm excited to be talking with you all because you are all obviously firmly rooted in the world of art, but you're all also moms. So for some context, I'd love you to tell our listeners the ages of kids that you have in your households. Laura, let's start with you. Well, my youngest is turning 20 next week, and so I have no kids in my household, but my kids are 20, 21, 24, and 26, and all grew up in Oklahoma City. Awesome. Amanda, how about you? Um, I have two kids. I have a 16-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter. And Natalie? I have six children, and they range in ages from 21 to 30. However, in September, I'm getting my very first grandchild. So I've got a whole new generation of kids um, to introduce to art and the world of museums. Oh, that is so exciting. Congratulations. I love hearing more about personal backgrounds because of, if you're watching the video, you know, we all have our professional backgrounds behind us. You can kind of see the worlds that all of these people are in, um, but hearing that personal aspect really brings it to light as well. So I'd love to just dive in by asking how we can start talking to kids about the importance of art and culture. You all kind of represent different areas of art, and I'd love to hear any tips you have to engage kids in the museum experience. So Amanda, would you start this time? Sure. I, I think for me, at least, the most important part is, um, well, first, when you get to that institution, wherever it might be, to let your child kind of choose what they're most drawn to and and let them kind of lead the way. And then I think the best way to make a connection is to relate it to their your lives or your child's life. So um, when you walk through, I think we feel this pressure to, to um, really learn something and go deep into history. And that is wonderful, but it's also wonderful to walk through take your time looking at the art and relate it back to your own lives, whether that be, um, you know, images of parents or images of pets or images of places that look like where we live and, and kind of um, creating those connections that way. That's how I like to do it. <laughs> That's great tip. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Natalie, do you have anything for us? You know, I, I, I do. I, I completely agree with, with Amanda. You bring it into, into their own lives. But I think it's important to start early and to start often. Um, my children and I travel often. And I'll never forget my youngest, who was six at the time, saying to me, what day is the forced march of culture? Um, because he didn't want to go to a museum again. Um, we happened to be in Tokyo, and as, it, and as it turned out, we went to a samurai museum, so he was perfectly happy. But, but you start early, and you create that expectation that, that we are going to go, and we're going to have fun, and, and there's, you're going to find something in here um, that, that you're going to love. I love that. Yes. And what young boy would not love to see some samurai swords? Exactly. <laughs> that is, that is the awesome. girls weren't so happy, but the yeah. boys were thrilled. Awesome. <laughs> Laura, I'd love to hear from you too. Yeah. I love the idea of following your kids' leads. Those were our best days at the zoo where one of the, one of the four got to choose which direction we were going and we all had to follow. Um, at Factory Obscura, of course, uh, everything is designed to be touched and interacted with and played with. So it's a different experience than going to other kinds of museums. But we, in addition to that, also have scavenger hunts that help the kids to really slow, slow down and look for details and really engage in that way as well. Well, and that's a great, great tip too, even if you don't have something on paper, because sometimes kids in any new environment, whether it's a museum or whatnot, get overwhelmed by all the sensory things that are happening. You know, especially I think in this time of 
we're bringing our kids out again in the past two years have been what they have been, you know, and, and little kids, especially I think can get overwhelmed just in crowds, let alone the colors and the lights and whatever else is going on in the exhibition. And so that's a great tip is, is using some scavenger hunt ideas to kind of guide kids through and slow down and calm and all, and all that kind of thing too. So I'd love to hear from you all about how art broadens our worldview. And is that the case? You know, it seems like you can look at something on the wall, but how do we make that connection about broadening our worldview um, as we're viewing it? Um, does it make us more empathetic people? How does that all work? So Natalie, I'd love to hear from you first. You know, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Art does make us uh, more empathetic people. Um, it allows us to see the world through someone else's eyes or touch the world through, through someone else's hands. And um, being able to do that and, and then say to your child, you know, how would you feel or what kind of fun would that be for you um, if you were actually in that painting or, or you were part of that sculpture? Um, and it, it, it makes them see things through somebody else's eyes and that really, is the foundation of, of empathy. Absolutely. Of course, at the National Cowboy Museum, you have the painting where uh, the man's boots can follow you in the room, no matter where you are right. <laughs> in the room, his boots are pointing at you. So you're literally asking yeah. him to put themselves in his boots. I can't tell you how many nights I've walked back and forth, you know, just thinking I could, I never, I never escape. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Laura, how about you? It, yeah, it is the basis of, of empathy and it is the expression of our connection to each other as humans. So when someone is creating art, they're actually showing you their, their insides and any time that you connect with that in any way, you're connecting to the human emotional experience. Um, again, like it's, we're lucky in this space that you can also physically get into the art and, ex, you know, and express, feel the emotion that way. Um, but it is, yeah, it does build empathy and connection. Beautifully said. And I saw Amanda nodding along as you were talking. You agree. I do agree. I mean, I'm not sure what else to add because I wholeheartedly agree with everything they've said. I think that, um, you know, we talk a lot about thinking like an artist in our institution, like through chores and things. And I think it helps you put yourself in someone else's shoes like they've both kind of talked about and, and try to imagine that situation. We're fortunate enough at our institution too to be able to bring in exhibitions from all over the country and all over the world. And I think that adds yet even another layer of um, not just experiencing things that we see every day, but things we might not have the opportunity to experience, to experience otherwise. And allowing our kids to, to um, have the opportunity to enjoy that and unpack that too. Well said, yes. And you three represent beautiful institutions where we do get to kind of have those outside of ourselves experiences. Um, I just love all of your responses there. I'd also love some tips on exploring art museums with kids. We touched on scavenger hunts, but another example might be perhaps we as parents need to adjust our expectations. For smaller attention spans, we may not be able to stop at every painting. Um, or maybe you have tips on asking kids questions or, or pointing things out, um, looking to engage them in that way. So basically, how do we make that experience especially relevant to kids? And Laura, let's start with you this time. Yeah, I think that um, touching kind of back on what Shirley was saying at the beginning, going early and often and going to the same place again and again and again. We have so many great institutions right here in Oklahoma City. Go back to the same place and let them experience it differently. They're going to get something different every single time they go. And then there's no pressure to get everything out of it that there is to be gotten. No pressure to stop and read anything, but the time to experience it, go back to it, experience it again. And then maybe the third time they're going to want to know the name of the artist. Maybe the fourth time they're going to want to know more. So building on it that way. That's a great and easy tip because that's how we as adults learn as well. We're not absorbing everything in the first <laughs> visit. So why would we expect kids to do that? Yes, that mm -hmm. is a very obvious, but uh, easily forgot tip. <laughs> Amanda, how about you? I mean, I agree with all of those things. And, and, you know, we have some resources that 
um, are hopefully helpful to families as they come in our in our spaces. So we have things like um, bags that you can check out that are age have age appropriate activities that have things like sketching materials and books and um, games that you can play in a gallery that are essentially just conversation starters so that you can start talking about works of art with your kids. And we even have in some of our spaces, not this one, but um, uh, labels on the walls, didactics on the walls that are intended for families and kids just to kind of get those conversations started. They're, they're usually really simple things like, what do you see? How can you tell me more about that? All of those types of things, but it helps um, get families hopefully interacting and visiting together and not just being quiet in the galleries, but having a whole conversation about works of art. Yes, lovely. Yeah. And at your museum, at the Museum of Art, I love how a lot of those labels are lower for eye, <laughs> the eye view of kids, <laughs> especially reading kids, you know, so they know it's for them. It's, a, again, a very easy and simple way to say kids are welcome here. Yeah, that was that was by design. So it's, and they're also thematically related to the more adult text on the wall too. So the idea is hopefully you can read together and then have a conversation if you have reading age kids. If not, you can still talk about those things together. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Natalie, the museum, National Cowboy Museum more than ever, I think is now more relatable to kids. Um, I'd love to hear your answers to these questions as well. It, it has certainly been been a, a labor of love um, to get the right people in place um, that that share my enthusiasm for um, uh, for for little ones and and for for bringing them them along um, through through the museum. But I found throughout my throughout my travels that almost all museums, as Laura said, almost all museums have have something that that will guide children through through their museum. In fact, I don't think I've ever been in a museum where where they weren't um, it, where they weren't trying to to make sure that the, that children understood and, and, and grew with them. Um, so ask ask at that front desk. What have you got for children? I mean, like Amanda said, here at the Cowboy, we've got guidebooks that are specifically for for children to help you go through the the um uh the museum we've got little magnifying glasses because we've we've embedded um hidden objects in in things so that that kids can can look for them um and then we create displays specifically for kids Licho Koshkimo, which is our 15 million dollar um addition um, is designed specifically for kids. Although I will tell you that each one of the spaces out there has a game. And more than once, I have heard a little voice say, when's it going to be my turn to play? <laughs> you know, because the adults are over there roping the cow or doing the, the, the game or, or, or whatever. So we designed them for kids, but it's, it, it's also for the young at heart. So ask, ask what they've got, ask what's available ask what they're what they know kids enjoy I love that last bit of what you said because we all still have childlike interests inside of us and play is so important at any age and so getting those kids in, involved in what adults can be involved in as well and bridging that gap and opening those conversations again conversations leading to empathy and understanding of other people and other cultures that's beautiful I just love I just love hearing about all of that so um, I'd love to hear now about the temporary exhibitions that you three have available and then why rotating exhibitions are important Amanda let's start with you you touched on this a little bit that sometimes museums in our own backyard, you know, it's easier to obviously visit those than those across the world or across the country. Um, but why are those temporary exhibitions important and what do you all have to offer right now? Well, I'll go back and say that, you know, we are really fortunate and we do focus on trying to show a wide range of different types of art, different types of exhibitions, and especially things that maybe um, Oklahomans wouldn't have the opportunity to see if they didn't leave the state. So. Um, Right now, we just opened up last weekend, I believe. It's Walter Yost Jr. and the Art of Sports Photography. And that's the gallery 
I'm currently standing in. And it's a, a, a retrospective essentially of one photographer named Walter Yost Jr. And um, a lot of the iconic sports photographs that he's taken over the years. So um, if you do decide to bring your families, you're gonna see lots of familiar faces um, of you know, athletes like LeBron James and Michael Jordan, as well as some photographs of places that Walter Yost Jr. traveled. So people who are like everyday athletes participating um, in sports. So I think that uh, families will find lots of connections in this gallery. It's up through September. Um, but we also have a beautiful uh, permanent collection that's lovely to go see while you're here. So you do indeed yes and that is so fun natalie i'd love to hear what you all have going on well it's really simple temporary exhibits are important because i'm bored easily and i need to see something new i want to experience something something new um and sometimes you don't you 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 want to explore a different topic or or explore it in a in a different way so just to give you a couple of examples of the temporary exhibits that we've got going on right now. And by the way, Amanda, I'll be there this weekend because that looks totally fun. Um, we have an exhibit called Western Wares. And so we've all seen the country Western singers, et cetera, with the fringe and, you know, all that sort of thing. But there is a long history of that. And, and so there's a, there's a, a wonderful exhibit relating to to clothing and and even cars and motorcycles and and home furnishings and furniture and things like that um, that sort of brought that western theme into I mean Ralph Lauren did not invent western wear um, and so it's, it's really designed for that but then we also have a temporary exhibit on tattooing and I thought that my curators were going to choke me when I said, let's bring a tattoo artist into the museum. And um, so we are now licensed as a tattoo parlor because we have tattoo exhibits going on here in the museum with live canvases. And it's it, it's it just makes the experience richer and, and, and more interesting for everyone from adults to children. You're right, because sometimes, especially Western wares or even tattoos, those things are depicted in the paintings you offer in your permanent gallery. Right. So right. you can dive more into, you know, what's going on and then see them throughout history in art. Beautiful. Yeah. Laura, how about you all? Well, before I answer, I want to say sorry to Natalie because I called you Shirley earlier. Um, you can call me Phillips if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we use our temporary exhibits to support artists to make things that they wouldn't otherwise be able to make because we can finance the project up front and then get reimbursed and then split profits with them. So Seed Reef is our temporary piece right now and it's a it's an underwater seascape all about the the bleaching of the coral reef and people who come to visit are invited to create coral pieces and fish to then go plant on the reef itself to bring it back to life. And it's done by Emma Defani and Zachariah, Malcolm Zachariah. So they came to us with this project. It actually was at AHA in Tulsa um, before it came here. We partnered with them to bring it here to re, you know, to reconfigure it, to light it, to add soundscaping and make it a collaborative piece. So um, for us, it's support to the artists, but it's also value add for families who are members of Factory Obscura, who come who come often. It gives them a reason to come back and something new to explore while they're still getting familiar and comfortable in mixtape. And so then they can go back in there and find new things that they haven't seen yet. Absolutely. Metro yeah. family had the opportunity to review the reef ex exhibition and I just love how you call it an immersive exhibition, but it's mm -hmm. also a uh, very much a STEM related exhibition because you get to talk about the sciences of the bleaching of the coral reef. And yeah. then you get to create your piece to put in there. You get to leave your mark, so to say. And I just have to say, cutting out one of those pieces of art, just one of them made my hand cramp. So I'm not sure how the artists <laughs> were doing all of the pieces in the exhibition by hand. There were no stencils used from what I understand. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> yes, it is. It's beautiful. So I, we've heard about your temporary exhibitions. Now I'd love to hear about what you all have coming up for kids. Um, I know you mentioned multiple times you have 
things all the time going on for kids, but I know you do some special programming every once in a while too. Natalie, what do you have going on? Well, the first Saturday of every month, we have something called Kids Take Over the Cowboy. And um, there's arts and crafts and, and special activities. Um, and, and kids love it. There will just be hundreds of kids running around making noise, which I love. Uh, on May 14th, we'll have late night at the Cowboy. Um, kids will bring their sleeping bags and um, uh, there'll be a movie and and exploring the museum by flashlight, which is, is tons of fun. And then this annual event that we have every year, the annual Chuck Wagon um, Festival will start at the end of May um, and it'll run for, for two days. And it's, it's just a hoot. Although I will tell you, I will never make another corn husk doll in my life, never again. But um, I feel like there's a story there. You might have to elaborate. Yeah, we have to. You know, I did it all day long, and you know, little kids go. People come, and they'll they'll make one doll. I probably made a hundred and fifty. Um, and then my daughter, as a joke, put one in my office, and it just totally creeped me out because um, <laughs> I thought it had magically appeared. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're having visions of the yeah. dolls yeah. for a long time. <laughs> Laura, I'd love to hear what you all have going on as well. We open at 10 on Wednesday mornings already. That's a little special hour that we set aside for families with younger kids so that they don't have to feel uncomfortable in the space if other people are here and the kids can make more noise. So that's every Wednesday. Um, we're going to be open extended hours for uh, spring break, opening Mondays and Tuesdays when we're normally closed. And next week on Wednesday night, we have a youth pride night that is free for kids who identify as LGBTQ. Um, it's actually already sold out, but we're gonna have four of those this year. So people should watch for those over the, over the course of the year. Lovely, we will definitely keep our eyes open for the next event. Amanda, I'd love to hear from you as well. Next week for spring break, March 16th through the 20th, we're gonna host our very first Sonic Family Discovery Week. So it's free admission for all. Um, we've partnered with the Metropolitan Library System, so go get your coupons. There's five select locations. They're on the website, okcmoa.com. Um, but you can also come with your family Wednesday through Sunday next week um, during regular admission hours. And we're going to have some special activities throughout the week. So um, Wednesday to kick it all off, the Thunder Entertainers and the Rolling Thunder Book Bus will be here from 11 to 1. Um, we're also going to welcome Sugar Free All Stars next Friday, the 18th, for a performance at 11 o'clock in the morning. And of course, Metropolitan Library will be here all day on Sunday doing a story time and a pop up library. So please come enjoy all of the wonderful art and bring the whole family and um, do so for free. Yes. And Natalie, you all have spring break activities coming up as well. Oh, we do. So it will be it will be kids take over the cowboy every day. Yeah. Um, and um, it, it is just so much fun. So much fun. I heard a mother shush her child the other day. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You go ahead and yell as much as you want to. <laughs> Thank you for giving us that permission. Sometimes as moms, we need to hear that, and especially moms and littles. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Well, thank you all for joining us uh, today on Raising OKC Kids. For those of you listening, please follow Factory Obscura, the Oklahoma Museum of Art, and the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum on social media, or you can visit their websites for more details. Join us every Tuesday for a new episode of Raising OKC Kids. Thanks again for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Kirsten. Thank you.